It's time to review the week in photos. And like any other week, last week was always interesting, but it all comes down to miles, driving, and most importantly, discover. So Monday, it was a rainy day, and I happened to be driving, and I noticed that they were removing the frame from the whaling museum for a new show that they're putting in involving boats. So they were removing this frame to, to actually put boats through the window because they were, they were too big to put through the door. And I actually got that, but I really like this photograph, the way the symmetry happens and the way that he's framed within the frames themselves. But you know something? It was raining, and it was ugly. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, uh, I don't want to get out of my car. So why should you get out of your car when you can make cool stuff like this, <laughs> right? So what are you looking at? Well, those are raindrops. Those are raindrops on the windshield of the car. And that's the iconic Whaleman statue that everybody knows, which is in front of the downtown library. So a lot of people ask me on social media, how did you take a photograph like that? Probably not the way you expected. What do I mean? Well, it wasn't a big camera. It was actually this little guy right here. This is a Fujifilm X-Pro1 with an 18 millimeter um, lens in macro mode. What, what does that mean? It means I can get really, really close to little raindrops on a window, but moral of the story, there's always something to photograph. You just have to be willing to look. So that was Monday. Tuesday, uh, I ended up in, this is in Mattapoisett, and by sheer luck, it happened to be the last boat being taken out of the harbor. So I guess boating season is officially over, right? But it's always cool to catch moments like that. And he's taking, he's removing the rigging. So you can see he's got some tools or something, and he's going to take this which is called the four sail or something like that. And I was driving in Wareham later on that day, and I noticed this. And then there's a guy up there, and he's removing it. It turns out this is an air sign from World War II. Uh, hopefully there won't be any air raids coming anytime soon. But they decided to remove this whole thing, which I thought was kind of cool. The next day, um, I had found out about uh, a caboose, which is a train car um, that they have like a little train at the Buttonwood Park Zoo. And this is the first one that had handicap accessible. So basically it was wheelchair accessible. And the backside comes up and you see this girl uh, from the Schwartz Center. She's going to be the first one on the ride. But you know something? Yeah, that's a cool shot. But gotta got to look for the special moments. Those are the moments that define a great photograph. And this is one of the directors from the Schwartz Center with her student just before she goes for a first ride. And you can see that there's real happiness and joy there, being the first one. And I shot that through the windows of all the cabooses. So, you know, it's easy. The, the easier shots is not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in moments that capture the essence of the moment. And that really is what it's all about. Unfortunately, the next day, well, things got a little sad. Um, I got a call from the paper that had been uh, two reported fatalities in a cushionet, and we really didn't know the exact details, but it turns out it was uh, uh, carbon monoxide, and a gentleman and his uh, nine-year-old son, they, they died there. And this is one of those assignments that it's, it's really hard. It's hard to photograph these moments because you are capturing that, in this case, it was his uncle that was in the house. And it's really difficult to capture these moments and be sensitive to what it is that you are trying to do. And there's two philosophies in journalism. You see, you can be like the wolf and who cares and just get in there. Or you can be, you know, respectful, observant, and yet capture the moment that defines what it is that people are looking at and how painful these moments are for these folks. And... The question I asked myself immediately is, like, do I have any CO monitors in my house? And it turns out I didn't. I wonder how many of you guys do, right? So these things still do happen. It's kind of incredible that this stuff happens. But unfortunately, two people died out there in a cushion. It. And it's, it's sad to see these moments, but it's something that as a journalist, you still need to capture. You need to tell these stories because hopefully, like me, you went out and you bought yourself CO2 monitors. The next day... Um, I happened to be having a cup of coffee, and I noticed this gentleman walking in this direction, so I grabbed my camera really quick, shot the photo, and I know who he is. He had no idea I took the photo, and then there was on the front page the next day. What better way to wake up 
and there you are, walking into the winter. So that's my week in photos, and I look forward to talking to you again next week.